This is an introduction to APL with more useful things. In APL there is a notion of primitive function. Here primitive means first. That cannot be broken down into any further. For example, plus, minus, uh, product and division and uh, reshape. Yes, reshape is a function. They're all primitives. They cannot be broken down any further. There is also the notion of scalar functions. These functions act on one number at a time. For example, you see three numbers plus two. Each number is added one by one. So you have three numbers, you add one to each, you get three numbers. It's the same for matrices. They act on one number at a time. If I have two rows and three columns of numbers, then each number in each row and each column will be acted upon. As you can see in the second example, I have dates, which is a table of two by three to which I subtract six numbers, again, a table of two rows and three columns, and each number is subtracted from the corresponding number in the other matrix. Outer product is a function in APL also. Here product means application of the function, as in to apply. For example, to apply addition between two sets of numbers, say 10 and 100, and three numbers, 1, 2, and 5, then I would use the following syntax. 10, 100, jot, which is the little character you see there, dot, plus, 1, 2, 5, meaning that the 10 will be added to 1, 2, and 5 on the first row, and 100 will be added to 1, 2, and 5 on the second row, resulting in a table in a matrix of two rows and three columns. The jot symbol can be entered with Control J. Here's another example, a multiplication table for the numbers from 1 to 5. So I set n to the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I apply product from n to n. So I say n jot dot product n, and I get the table of 5 rows and 5 columns. The shape of an outer product is given by the number of numbers on the left argument and the number of numbers in the right argument. So if I have two numbers on the left and nine numbers on the right, I will get a table of two rows and nine columns. Here's another function, the power function. In math, when you want to multiply a number p times by itself, you write an exponent p. For example, if you want to multiply two six times by itself, you would write two exponent six. This is the same and simpler here as saying 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. In APL, if you want to multiply a number p times by itself, you write n star p. Star as in there's power in a star. For example, if you want to multiply 2 6 times by itself, you would write 2 star 6. The power function can also be used to find the roots in math. If you want to find the square root of a number, you use a square root of n or n exponent 1 half, or n exponent 0 0.5. To find the fourth root, you would use the fourth root of n, or n exponent 1 quarter, or n exponent 0 0.25. In APL, if you want to find the square root of a number, you do the same. You do n star 0 0.5, and for the fourth root, you would use n star 0 0.25. Here's an example. You want to find which number is 10 multiplied by itself four times. So you would say 10 exponent 4, 10 star 4, which is 10,000. If you want to find the number which multiplied by itself will yield 64, in other words, you want to find the square root of 64, you would say 64 exponent or star 0 0.5. Another one, if you want to find the number which multiplied by itself three times will yield 64, you would say 64 exponent 1 divided by 3 or 1 third. And if you wanted to find the square and the square root of 16, you would say 16 star 2 for the square and 0 0.5 for the square root. Here you have 16 exponent, a list of numbers. Logarithms. The logarithm function, also called log, is the inverse of power. With power you can ask, give me 10 multiplied by itself 3 times, or give me 10 exponent 3. With log, you can ask, how many times do I have to multiply 10 to get 1,000? That is 10 log 1,000. The log symbol is found um, by using Control shift 8 in dialog. Here's another one. How many times do I have to multiply 2 to get 8, to get 32? 
how many times do I have to multiply 3 to get 81? In APL, we can answer all three questions at once by saying 2, 2, 3, log 8, 32, 81. So, 2, how many times do I have to multiply 2 to get 8? How many times do I have to multiply 2 to get 32? How many times do I have to multiply 3 to get 81? And the answer is 3, 5, and 4. You want a proof? Here it is. 2 exponent 3 is 8, 2 exponent 5 is 32, and 3 exponent 4 is 81. Here's an example for accountants. How much money will I have if I put $10,000 at 12% interest for 15 years? Here's the answer. Over $54,000. How many years will it take to get $5 if I invest $1 at 8%? It will take over 20 years. Scaled or exponential notation. Well, when numbers are too big or too little, APL uses a different way to express numbers called E notation. It's engineering notation. For example, the number 1 billion can be written in APL as 1E9, that is 1 times 10 exponent 9. Here's another one. 2 exponent 1000 is over 10 exponent 301. That part before the E is called the mantissa, and the part after the E is called the exponent. Two more functions, minimum and maximum. You can find what's the largest of two numbers by using the maximum function. Which one is the largest of 3 and 5? Five? 5. Or the smallest of the numbers with a minimum. Which one is the minimum between 3 and 5? 3. Those two scalar functions, just like plus, minus, product, and divide, work on lists and tables. So if n is 1, 2, 3, saying m is a sign n jot dot maximum will give us a table of the largest numbers. So let's recap. Primitive functions are fundamental. They're the building blocks. Scalar functions apply one number to another number. Outer product apply one number to all the others. Power and log are reverse scalar functions. Exponential notation displays numbers in a short way with an E in it. And minimum and maximum are other functions that are scalar functions. That is it.